Michael Will? Yes. Nice, nice to, to meet you. you. Come on in. I'm sorry we're late. Oh, don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we've never really been upstairs. Welcome to the floor, one of the floors of the school of social work. Um, I could give you a tour, but whatever. Maybe afterwards. After, yeah, yeah. 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 So, uh, food is here. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, there. Oh. Water, we got water uh, in this room right here. Whatever oh, you like. Thank you. Thank you. Shut off my computer real quick. Yeah, we did a little bit. The view here is really cool. Yeah. So I should have gone home and stayed in my athletic shorts. <laughs> <laughs> I was way more comfortable. It's so really. warm out. I walked I out like this and I'm like, oh. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. I figured I'd give you a little introduction of who I yeah. am, uh, what I do, um, including the history of how to drink. I don't know if you drink soda or water or whatnot, but like. Um, yeah, I'll probably get water in a little bit. Okay, um, I'll be now, just so you know, uh, water is like. Yeah. Start off with getting that. Just for school, so like two years. Okay, how about I'm, you? I'm from here. Okay. Yeah. But I'm not used to the clouds. I'm not used to. Well, there, the winter was kind of mild, right? Yeah, yeah it wasn't so bad this winter. Yeah. yeah, so anyway, uh, I am loving the warmer weather. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so anyway, I'm a master's student here. I work in. This is the Center on Race and Social Problems. Um, and then, so I'm in the School of Social Work, School of Public Health, and also I'm in the student council for the social work uh, student body. So I'm the president. Nice. But um, yeah, so I try to stay involved. Um, yeah. And anyway, I wanted to invite you to, you know, kind of share in dialogue and perspectives and kind of ask, how's it been going these past few weeks? Yeah. Um, and just, uh, there's no chance. <laughs> I really, when the opportunity came to uh, reach out to you on like a personal level, I, I kind of felt a lot of hope in that versus right. What I make up in my, in my mind, like the periphery stuff, right. uh, there, there's a lot going on on campus. Right. Um, and that's really what the goal is of just having a conversation. Right. And really, how, how's it been going for you? Yeah, I mean, um, good. We started Turning Point Chapter uh. this fall, so like, like last semester. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think it's been going good. Um, we definitely, we love politics. Okay. So, like, to start, I, I would start there. Yeah. Um, and our ideals are more conservative. Mm -hmm. So that's why Turning Point was, like, perfect for us to start. And there wasn't okay. anything like this on campus. Yeah. So Turning Point is, like, we can't represent either, like, the Democratic or the Republican Party. Mm -hmm. um, it's, like, non-profit. What's the title that it goes under? 501 It's a 501 right. yeah. So it's, yeah. like, we can't ever, like, say vote for him, vote for her, like, whatever. Yeah. Um, but we do you know, believe in conservative ideas. Right. And there wasn't anything like that on campus besides college Republicans, but that's strictly for, you know, Republicans, mm -hmm. and they have the Democrat one. So um, so that's kind of what we wanted to start it. I mean, it's been hard. Okay. Because, I mean, this campus is very, you know, liberal, I guess. Okay. Um, and, I mean, that's okay. I mean, but I think that, you know, everybody deserves to have a place. Yeah. So like that's really why I wanted to start it, and it's been hard. I knew I would get a lot of hate for it, and it's hard too because, you know, just because we might think differently or we might not agree mm -hmm. doesn't mean that I'm like, oh, or like, I don't know, I hate it. It's not, it's not in any way for me, and I think that's where it gets confusing because everybody thinks I'm like out to get them because of the way I think, you yeah. know? And it's like, that's literally not the case. Mm -hmm. We invite anyone and everybody to come. Okay. We love hearing different perspectives. Right. We really do. And like, you don't have to think like us because everybody in the club doesn't think the same. Yeah, we agree in mm -hmm. some, you know, topics, but we right. definitely disagree a lot. Okay. And that's okay. But like, 
the hate that we got for bringing these speakers on campus because of the way we think. Yeah. And like, it was sad because like I even talked to some of the protesters afterward, and I mean they were coming up to me saying like you're actually not an awful person, and it's like mm. we're not out here to like target you guys. They were so scared that like they were wearing like the hard hat like hats like okay. those white like construction hats to the protest, mm. thinking that we were gonna like counter protest and like hurt them. Okay. And it's like oh my gosh like yeah. I would never even like touch you with a feather. Like I wouldn't. I, like that's not the goal here. Like right. the goal here is for like conservative ideas and conservative conservative discussion to have a place on campus. Right. Like that's it. You know. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it's been hard because there's a lot of hate. Yeah. But it's also been like really awesome because we met so many really cool people, mm -hmm. and like we actually feel like we have friends on this campus. Okay. Um, one before we like did it. Yeah. How, is your experience been different or is it the same? No, I'd say it's <laughs> same. Yeah, I like yeah. try to sum it up quickly. Yeah. But, like, yeah. I feel like that's like the overall idea of it. And then which pr protests were you referring to? Because there, was there more than one? Yeah, so we, so there's three conservative events happening. Right. We only had two of them. I mean, we're really good friends with college Republicans, so okay. they have the next one. So I get how it kind of gets like blurred. Yeah. Um, but we only had two. Um, okay. So mm -hmm. the, and those are in the past. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So the Cabot, Phillips, and then Riley Gaines. Okay. Um, Cabot Phillips was talking about what the media doesn't tell you because he works in the media. Mm -hmm. And then Riley Gaines was talking about yeah. her um, experience yeah. with having uh, a male and a woman's oh, sport. Okay. That was pretty much it. So we got a huge protest for both. Okay. Um, I mean, LGBTQ community was really like offended by it. But, like, it made no sense to us because they had such a big protest for Cabot. Mm -hmm. And Cabot was talking about like media, mm -hmm. and it's like any conservative speaker we bring, whether they're talking about like puppies or a super hard like controversial topic, okay. they're gonna protest, and that's fine. That's their freedom of speech. But it's just like I don't know. It's like confusing. Yeah. Because like that that wasn't even what was talked about. Okay. Um, I feel like Cabot's could have been appealing to anybody. Yeah, I feel like there could have been a lot of good dialogue. Mm -hmm. Like, we have a Q&A session at the end of any of the events we okay. have. Uh -huh. And, like, we always say, like, opposing ideas, like, raise your hand first. Mm -hmm. Because we want to have that dialogue. Like, I don't know, voice your opinion, we might agree. Like, yeah. we, there might be a common ground. Yeah. And so, like, we had that opportunity. But, like, for Cabot, a lot of protesters did get into the room. And they disturbed our event for, like, 15 minutes. Oh, and we okay. were pretty yeah. upset with that because Pitt's guideline says that they can peacefully protest, mm -hmm. but as soon as somebody starts like disrupting the event, then they get kicked out. Okay. It took them like 15 minutes to kick someone out because they were giving warning and warning and warning. And they were loud. They were like yelling at each other. And like mm -hmm. Cabot was like trying to speak through the microphone. And so was Khalil. And they couldn't even hear themselves because that's how loud they were. Okay. And that's when we were like, okay, that's not fair because they have all these events. Yeah. We might not agree, mm -hmm. but you don't see us there, like, disrupting it. Like, no, right. they can have their event. Like, that doesn't affect us in any way, you yeah. know? Like, let them do their thing. And, like, it was just really upsetting. For Riley, it was better. Okay. Um, because we were, <laughs> like, really careful who we let in and out. Mm -hmm. So the police didn't want us to let those protesters back in. Um, because they did try to steal our signs at the end, too. The police literally had to yank it out of their hands. Okay. Because, I mean, it's just not right, to, to my opinion. But... Um, Riley's was so much better, and it's it's crazy to think because that one was a little bit more controversial mm -hmm. than Cabot. So, right. but I mean, the yeah. protesters that were there, they got to ask questions at the end, and it was good dialogue. Okay. I mean, we did have to cut them off kind of short because we only had I think ten minutes left, and it was mm -hmm. like four questions. Yeah. Um. But I mean, yeah, I, I guess that's just like the reality of things, you yeah. know. Politics is going to be controversial. Okay. There's yeah. always going to be two sides. For sure. But in no way, shape, or form are we ever trying to hate on somebody uh -huh. because we might not agree with a certain ideology, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's what I think makes us different than maybe a lot of conservatives or if you want to call us Republicans on you know campus or a college campus. Uh -huh. um, we really have no hate in our heart mm. <laughs> just because we don't agree with something. Like that. Yeah. I mean, Live your life, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I don't agree with it, but that's fine. I don't have to. Yeah. Um, and what are you studying? Are you both studying the same thing? Or? Yeah, we are. Um, we're in, like, 
Well, we want to go to law school, so okay. we're doing like the Law of Criminal Justice Society. Gotcha. Um, yeah. How's, how's you been with that program? Is it all right? Or are you disappointed? Or um, a little disappointed, honestly. Yeah. I yeah. thought I would learn more, like, about the law. Okay. Um, it's been more like race theory, race, like things like that, which I'm not saying aren't important. They definitely are, but like mm -hmm. I feel like that's been like the majority yeah. of like. So too much emphasis. Maybe. Yes. Yeah. So I wish I was learning about like the law or like just like I don't know like things that I'll use in law school or like kind of to get an idea if I even want to go to law school. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I feel like it didn't really do that for me. Yeah. 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 Um. Two quick things is I wanted to at least introduce you to my Ron, yeah. who I work with. He, he bought the meal and whatever. Uh, and he, was, oh, okay. he was super interested to, to, to meet you. So do you mind yeah. if I just go? No, absolutely. Grab it. Okay, cool. And if, he, if he's free, you can take it. Okay, you don't cool. mind. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Nice to meet you. Oh, Good to meet nice you. Nice to meet you, Ellen Lily. Lily, good to meet y'all. How's it going? Good. Good. Thank you so much for. Oh, yeah, thank you. Meal. Am I coming, Joe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Feel free. yeah. Cool. Are we were just chatting a little bit, getting to know one another. They're nice. in the criminal law, law criminal law justice, justice society. society. <laughs> okay, yeah. yeah. Law. Say one more time. Law, criminal justice, and society. Law, criminal justice. Is that a class? It's major. It's a major. It's a major. It's what a new major. Um, Dietrich, is that how you say yeah. it? Yeah. Law, is that, is that like a precursor to law? Pre law, yeah. 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 Okay, how's it yeah. going? So, well, are you both in the same? Mm -hmm. And yeah. are you, what year are y'all? I'm graduating in the fall. Uh, and? So, I'll graduate senior? next spring, so nice. I'll be a senior. Okay. Yeah. And how's it going so far? Good. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> We're almost <laughs> done with it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, as in? The degree experience is okay, or? Yeah, the degree experience was okay. Okay. I don't think it was like, I, I should have probably done something else. Oh. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that would uh, like still get me into law school. I thought it would be more focused on law, uh, but it wasn't as much. I got you. So, what are your thoughts? Same thing. I. There's like a, like a huge emphasis on, on like, like, um, systematic racism and stuff like that. Like, not to discredit that, that's mm -hmm. great, but I feel like that's all that it's been. Yeah. Uh, like, all my classes yeah. have taught me, like, there was one semester where I had, like, three classes that were covering the same thing. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I was like, oh my gosh, first of all, it's confusing. Yeah, yeah it's kind of <laughs> confusing, like, to remember, like, okay, this is this class, yeah. this is that class. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, it's been fun, I guess. Oh, there you go. Classes aren't too hard. That, that was yeah. a reflection of the social work, the MSW program here. Is yeah. that um, one of my peers in um, the, the, the internship that I was in? Uh, she was she wanted a more LGBT focus, right. and it was very it's really rooted, uh, rooted in uh, critical race theory. Mm -hmm. They don't really it's not like a label that they put on right. yeah. on the website, but um, just awareness of systemic racism. So yeah. that was a shared reflection in like another school that, right. mm, that I just thought was. Which is yeah. interesting. Yeah. Like it's definitely important, but like we don't need 30 classes on it. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. You, you know, yeah. I, I want to talk about systemic racism, you know, <laughs> that's like my primary area of focus, <laughs> you know, but part of what I really try to do is to help people understand it, you know, through the complexity and pervasiveness right. because mm -hmm. It's one of those things where I think we take for granted how undereducated we are on the way right. systems work, right. you know, and so I, I try to tell folks when we think about racism, it's not, I don't necessarily think about individual behaviors, right? right. I think about outcomes, right. right? And that when you look at outcomes in society, you know, whether it's in health or criminal justice or education or even economic opportunity, right. it's producing the same results time and time again, which means right. there's something in our system, right, that it, the way it's been shaped to produce those outcomes, yeah. right? And so for all of us, we want to get real good at trying to examine where are those spaces within the system where we can intervene to create outcomes in which everybody can experience fairness, right? Right, Because I think all of us want a society where everyone can experience fairness. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. Like no of one course. wants to see anyone suffer, right? You know, right, that, absolutely. As a result of just being who they are. You know, so I think for me, I'm always really trying to, how do we elevate the opportunity for people to see the system for what it is and so that everyone can use their own ingenuity, right, to identify yeah. things that they can affect change. Yeah. 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 I like that perspective on it. Mm -hmm. I don't think yeah. we were, were really, like, touching on that perspective in our classes. Yeah. And I think that's the other challenge, too, because 
like what I'll say, you know, about the university, this place has been very, very meaningful for me. You know, I'm a pit grad like three times over, undergrad, master's, <laughs> doctorate. Nice. You know, I used to play pit football back in the day. That's so I can literally say I broke bones for this university. I, I have <laughs> bled for this institution, you know, but I also realized some of the challenges that are, are, are sort of embedded in the institution are so deeply embedded that most folks can't see it, right. right? You know, and it's hidden in policies and neutral language. It's hidden in particular cultural practices. You know, it's, it's hidden in the sort of behaviors that folks are not aware of, implicit biases and behaviors that people put people in a position to perpetuate things that they don't want to see, right? Because right. again, most folks don't want to see people suffer yeah. you know, based on their identity. And so my goal is really, how do we elevate understanding in a way where folks can feel much more affirmed about how they can make change happen so that everyone can thrive? Right. right, you know, because that's the mission of the university, leverage knowledge for the good of society, mm -hmm. right? And so how are we putting young folks in a position to say, I can see the problem so much clearer now, and so I know where I can affect change at a high level, or at least within the field of interest I'm in. Yeah, okay. I like that. Yeah. They should have done it that way. Yeah, yeah. you should have just taught all those classes. Yeah, <laughs> you know what, y'all can come through, we do the Racial Equity Consciousness Institute, and so if you want like a real <laughs> meaningful, instructive yeah. sort of way to approach it, man, we're happy to talk about it. Thank you. You know, that's all I talk about all day. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Going through that, that institute in the process really uh, positioned me to, to be here with you today because mm -hmm. I think if I, I refer to my life as like former versions of myself. Um, and so maybe a year ago, if I was here on the campus and things kind of popped off as they have, I mean, um, I probably would have been way too activated or too, uh, disoriented on like what can I do to try and advocate for you know my friends and peers who feel harm and don't feel safe right. for and I think you 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 know you've shared that that yeah. some people you know have are rightly um, uncomfortable mm -hmm. um, but that doesn't mean that they have to bring hate right. and so the the connecting line here is um, this is an opportunity for me as like a future social worker or just a social work student to engage in conversation, um, kind of advocate for my friends who, yeah, are, are very fearful, I guess, when some speakers have come, or they're, you know, they're, we're still another one, right? Yeah. And, and I'm piecing together that you, you didn't invite my friends. No, so, you know? no, no. I okay. mean, Th we're all in the club. Okay. It's kind of the same people, okay. but we mm -hmm. are the officers for Turning Point. We're not the officers for College Republicans. Okay. College yeah. Republicans is hosting Michael Knowles. We had Riley and Cabot. Okay. Uh, so even though it's kind of like the same thing, really, like everybody confuses us because yeah, gotcha. every single member is a member for both clubs. Yeah, gotcha. um, yeah, gotcha. yeah, but like we're not allowed to, like, I guess... Like I said, we're nonpartisan, so yeah. we can't say vote for this person or vote for that person. Mm -hmm. So, like with our speakers, it's it's like just conservative. Mm -hmm. Like we can't yeah. ever have anybody that's coming and like promoting, you know, Biden or Trump. Like oh, that, we see. can't yeah. do that. Uh, um, also, they like they are very strict with who we are allowed to bring. Yeah. So like we can't bring on a, turning like point, tur not. turning point doesn't oh. allow us to bring unapproved speakers. So yeah. like we okay. couldn't. So like we could have brought Knowles, but that's not. That's not yeah. us. That's, uh, that's uh, yeah. college Republicans. Well, really ISI. They've just kind of created a space on mm -hmm. campus to host them. ISI mm -hmm. is um, I don't know. Inter in inter intercollegiate inter studies of something. Yeah. Institution. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. They're bringing him, and I guess they just kind of need like a campus to, to host him. And mm -hmm. then college Republicans were like, yeah, we'll do it here. Okay. We haven't had a speaker or whatever. So. Mm -hmm. Based on uh, your interactions, or I don't, you know, peers, classmates, and the other groups, mm -hmm. um, are there folks who m m might be welcome at this table in terms of engaging in dialogue? Or are they pretty like? Because you seem really in engaged in terms of me yeah. and responsive. Yeah, it's, it's, are, are, are there it's really it, it's really tough because like one of the things, a lot of people who like want to join our club or feel like think the same have like the same opinions and feelings don't want it to be known mm -hmm. they're because scared. like they're in a sorority or they're in this club or running for some type An of officer, officer mm. position mm. in another club and think that it will negatively impact their experience at college right. mm. but I, I would say Dylan he's the president right now of college republicans and even Sal, they yeah. I think those two I mean 
I feel like if you're an officer for our club mm -hmm. or their club, they'd be more willing okay. to, yeah. to come and like talk and have dialogue. I mean, we love it. We want mm -hmm. it. Like we want to hear. We mm. want to like have a common mm. ground. Like mm -hmm. I said, like it's really sad because I feel like I'm a very nice person. Mm -hmm. And in no way would yeah. I want to make anyone ever feel like they have to be fearful for their lives or things like that. Mm -hmm. And certainly not by bringing somebody just to speak. Mm -hmm. And so like I'm I'm more than happy to always like have a conversation. Like I said, the girl who organized the whole protest. Mm -hmm. I gave her my number and we're going to go have coffee because, I mean, at the end of the event, she said, you're not a bad person, Lily, and I'm right. not. Like, it's, it's, I mean, if you would have been to these events, like, what, what they said about the LGBTQ community, I mean, that was just Riley because she was right. the only one talking about that controversial issue, but she really just kept it to her experience and how uncomfortable it was for her to see a male in the women's locker room. That, that yeah. was it. It was like a purely subjective viewpoint. Yeah, it, that was it. It was mm -hmm. her story. And that's really all that was talked about in yeah. regards to that. And, I mean, for, for people to feel like they have to be fearful for their lives, like, it's like, come on, that's I, not what we're doing here. Like, at all. Mm -hmm. Like, there's no way. And, like, the Michael Knowles one, that's a little bit more controversial because Michael, um, he went to CPAC and he was talking about that topic. Yeah. Um, a lot of people have grossly misquoted him um, mm -hmm. by saying that he wants to, what was it, eradicate, eradicate transgenderism. That's what he... No, transgenderism. Well, that's what they think. That's what they say yeah, that he said. Yeah, they're saying that he wants to eradicate transgenders. And even though that's not our speaker, we know that that's not what he said. In no way, shape, or form did he want to eradicate transgenders. That is, yeah. no, I, <laughs> no. I, I, I think what, if there's like, a, sorry, I don't no, know no. Ex you like, help me explain yeah. what like. Right. So what he meant is eradicate transgenderism as an ideology, which is very different than let's eradicate transgenders. I, like that is completely different. He thinks that transgenderism as an ideology is even hurting transgenders. And that's kind of what he was talking about. I mean, he'll come and speak on campus. That's not really our speaker. But, like, I mean, people just take things and run with it, even if they're not true. And same thing for us, saying that we're racist, harmful people. Mm. And, I mean, even the chancellor is saying that about us in a statement. Like, that's, mm. I mean, it's just not fair. Because, one, you don't know us. Mm. We're very nice people. We can all think differently. We can all have a different opinion on very different things. That doesn't mean I hate you. Mm -hmm. I might not agree with you, but that's okay because everybody's entitled to their own opinion. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, if we were bringing someone that was, like, going to hurt somebody, I mean, first of all, we wouldn't do that. Yeah. And second of all, Pitt wouldn't allow that. Mm -hmm. But there's a reason why Pitt is also allowing these speakers, you know, free speech. Yeah. I, um, I, I think that, like... One of our goals here is there's like a stigma around if you have conservative viewpoints or if you're a Republican, et cetera, that like you're out to get people who are in the LGBTQ community, you're a racist, you like this, that, the other thing. And I think that like one of the things that we're also trying to accomplish is making it so that people don't think that we're going to hurt you. Oh my, there's a Republican in my class. Like, right. be careful, watch <laughs> yeah. your back type mm -hmm. of deal. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and I feel like that's how it is. Mm -hmm. um, but I- how do, you, how do you think people feel that though? They were saying things like that. Like one of the com, so we joined their discord whenever they were organizing these protests. Oh wow, okay. So, so the reason we joined their discord, mm -hmm. let me give a little bit of background yeah. to that. So I started getting a lot of like, threatening comments on like my personal and on I mean it's the Instagram for a turning point at uh, Pitt. Yeah. And so it was like very scary. So um Lynn Lynn, she's like the source yeah, yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, kind of she like, was like, Hey, I'm gonna give you some resources because like you can't just not do anything about this because if something were to happen you didn't say anything like mm. you know. So I went ahead and I talked to Title Nine office. Oh, over, over, yeah. yeah, and yeah, then yeah. they like put me in touch with like the cops, yeah. and they and were like they we, were also trying to do their assessment, assessment to see how much security, security. is needed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so then I was like, okay, well, like they were like, can you provide like screenshots? And I did, and we were at the Discord at that time because they were saying things like they wanted to bring like baseball bats behind their poster signs, like, mm -hmm. and I was like, okay, like that's really unsafe. 
Like, so there was just a bunch of things. So we joined their Discord. We sent them, like, hey, these are the things that they're planning. Mm -hmm. And we are scared because we're not going to be counter-protesting. We're literally just going to be enjoying our event. If you want to come to it, great. If you don't want to come to it, great. But, um, so, yeah, like, we were really scared because it's, like... Yeah, we weren't <laughs> like, really sure. We weren't really sure what was going to happen. That was, like, yeah. the first conservative viewpoint speaker on campus in five years but they had like said stuff like that like oh like don't wear your pride flag around your neck because they could come and grab you from behind or mm -hmm. something like you know yeah. things along those lines but i think like our goal that we're trying to accomplish too aside from making a safe space for people who have conservative viewpoints yeah. is like i don't think it there needs to be that stigma like we're not going to hurt anybody we may disagree but like this can be a safe place for all of us, all of us you know, yeah. where we can have dialogue, yeah. where you can go to the Cabot Phillips event that is pretty neutral and listen, or, you know, go and hear different viewpoints. Yeah. You know and what like, I mean? It's funny, too, because, like, I grew up competitively dancing, mm -hmm. and there's definitely a lot of guys who are gay, mm -hmm. and I am friends with them. <laughs> so it's yeah. like, how are you going to tell me that I hate this community? Yeah. You know what I mean? When you don't even really know me. Yes, I have a conservative ideologies. Mm -hmm. I am a Christian, which I get hated for, I guess, because mm -hmm. that's such a bad thing. But it's like, you, at the end of the day, you don't know me. Mm -hmm. Just because I have conservative ideas, now you're putting me in this bubble that I'm a racist, a to like toxic, uh, whatever else you want to call me. Like, I had someone flick me off and tell me that I hate women. Mm. I am a woman <laughs> like mm. why are you telling me or like I hate people of color I'm from Mexico mm. <laughs> like mm. well, like it's just like bizarre but like there's so much hate and I, I really think that we are never really the aggressors mm. I really think that at it's least, never us at least if you isolate yeah turning like point us, out pit. like yeah, at Pitt I'm sure, saying of sure. course like I well, can't speak for everybody else yeah. but so I wondered like Relative to folks who are transgender, have y'all had a chance to connect with people who identify as transgender and get their um, I think we have, like, so, so, I mean, I've had experiences. We went to, it's, a club, it's like a debate. Oh, club. ethics and debate. Ethics and right. debate. And we, and we went and we debated. Um, there was people who identified as transgender, uh, and then there was a lot of conservatives that went and debated peacefully, civilly, how it should be. Mm -hmm. And, um... I mean, we'll never agree, but we don't hate them. You know what I mean? Like, we don't have to agree with, with them. Yeah. We most certainly. When you say you don't agree, like, what don't you agree with? Like, okay, if you want to, if you want to be, you know, identified as transgender, you do you. <laughs> like, I am not one to say, don't do it. Mm -hmm. But the second that like, they're pushing it down our throats, that's what I don't like. Like they like, for example, I will never agree with this. Just because, I mean, I'm very opinionated on this. Like pronouns, I'm not gonna use them. I am a female, I'm a girl, therefore a she. Now, if you want me to call you something else, I will try to. Sometimes I maybe won't remember because it's so new to me and nobody that I circle around uses them. Like, but the second you're calling me a racist or something like that for not calling you the right pronouns, half the time it's because I forget. Mm -hmm. It's a new thing. I am not used to it. Nobody in my family, like nobody in my inner circle uses them. Mm -hmm. So like, it's hard. Mm -hmm. That's something that's hard. And that's what I'm, I talk about, like shoving things down my throat. No, have there been like transgender folks who've come to you personally and like... No, not transgender, but like... Um, I don't think they identified as transgender, at least, but they're very opinionated, um, like with the LGBT community, LGBTQ community. Mm -hmm. um, but I I don't know if they were necessarily transgender or not. I don't know. I, mean, I didn't ask, so I mean, I don't I, like. I would. I don't know. I I feel uncomfortable asking that. Why? Because I don't know. What if some people are like offended if I ask them if they're transgender? Well, I mean, you know what I well, mean, I mean like, to, to the extent that someone identifies that way. So, right. Because part of what I, I'm interested in is like, to the idea of conversation, right, perspectives, right. and you know, recognizing that there are a lot of folks who do feel harm 
like have you had a chance to connect with them to understand why they feel harmed no no i mean if they reached out to us we would yeah absolutely yeah. want to hear why because maybe it's a valid point mm -hmm. but like i mean right now all we think is it's not really valid because whenever like they'll comment on our post or something they'll just say that we're gonna hurt them or but it's like call us transphobes the transphobes or, like how, like how are we gonna hurt immediately you? Mm. the walls up yeah. yeah so like if they could provide like a valid argument as to why they feel harmed yeah then of course i want to listen yeah. you know so the one guy in general like i think when they heard eradicate transgenderism that right. sounds very scary of course. right yeah you know, and, and, and so in that sense you know i could see or like whoa right you know, why why are they supporting this right of course you know? and so that that's what i'm wondering like have you had a chance to connect with folks on, on that no and uh, i feel like if we reached out they'd probably be like they're going to kill us if we meet things like that like that is to the ex like to the extent that they take it so one of the things i often talk about yeah. you know in our systems is that we're also socialized to use stereotypes right that sometimes we discount how we think people are going to respond before you even give them a chance. Right. Right. Just kind of like folks have been discounting you before they give you a chance. Mm -hmm. And maybe perhaps, right. you know, creating the space to have the conversation yeah. say, I want to better understand, you know, that perhaps the people might respond affirmatively. Right. Right. And, and that way we don't have these sort of self-imposed barriers where, well, if I reach out, they won't respond right. in kind. Right. right. That That's kind of what I share with Gabriel is that I, I think you all are good people. You know, I think most folks, you know, are good people. I don't think yeah. there's anything, you know, wrong with having differences of opinions. I think our challenge is, is that in many ways, those differences can be, you know, flashing points. And I think there are actors in society who know where those divisions are and like yeah. to stoke the fire, yeah. you know? And so when I see someone like Michael Mills, I'm like, well, he probably knows that this is going to upset a lot of folks, right. you know? And to the extent that when folks are upset, you know, that we have to, particularly folks who experience like a marginalized identity, right? That is an identity that they're already dealing with the consequences of not, uh, of society not necessarily embracing who they are, right? That, that you put them in a position now where they, they don't feel very safe, right? Yeah. And I think that's part of the concern you see here is that, you know, what should be an environment where everyone feels safe, right? Now there's this thread of, oh, this person is talking about eradicating, you know, my identity, mm -hmm. you know, and who else is going to bring to campus? And right. then, does that ideology fester, right? And, and so I'm always mindful that, you know, people, again, because we don't often understand each other very well, you know, have these sort of self-imposed beliefs or stereotypes right. that they use to kind of guide how they engage versus saying, like, we're all human beings, right? Yeah. And that most human beings are good people, yeah. you know, and that one of the things we all need to work on is perfecting our connections with each other. I agree. Right? Creating space to better understand each other. Yeah, and you actually remind me, um, so there is this, um, student and his name is Henry and the first interaction that I had with him was when we were tabling for turning point and he came up to me and flicked me off and I mean said a bunch of beautiful things to me and um after that there was one time I reached out to him on Instagram because then we started like getting to know each other mm -hmm. he knew my name I knew his and I was like um, I DM'd him and I was like, hey, Henry, like, are you an officer for the Democrat Club? Because we want to have a debate, like a civil debate with, you know, having someone moderate. And he was like, this is a setup. And I said, I'm just asking if you're an officer because mm -hmm. I want to reach out to whoever is the president and I can't find that information anywhere. Could you point me in the right direction? He was like, I'm not talking to you. And I said, Henry, we think differently. I don't have it out for you. We could be friends. Mm -hmm. Let's just not talk about politics if we ever hang out because we know that's like a soft spot for both of us. We can be friends. And this is what I don't understand. He left me on red and then we saw him again on campus because he was passing out the protest flyers while we were tabling for our event. Mm -hmm. He was right in front of our table and Khalil went up to him and he was like, Henry, can I see one of the flyers you're passing out? Because we haven't seen them, but we know that you're doing it for the protest. And, like, he was so rude to him, turned his back away from him. And I'm like... I always, we always say hi to him, we too, whenever we see him. him like, and he says hi back. It's not like, you know... And it's, like, things like that. Like, we don't agree with you politically. We might not even agree with you with some morals you have. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. We can still be civil. We don't have to be best of friends. But we can be civil. If I see you, don't flick me off. Mm -hmm just say hi there's nothing harmful in hey lily or how's your day been because that's how we are mm -hmm. 
we'll never be like ew or like flick you off because you identify as something right. else or because you think differently than us like that's just not who we are as people i think that one of our like approaches because like we know that the demographic of Pitt students is majority i would say democrat or democrat liberal. identifying or just liberal um we know that if we just go out and paper the campus and start saying this that and the other thing if like we take that approach like it's not it's not going to be like received very well at all mm -hmm. i think that like if we are nice build relationships there's that chance that somebody will feel differently about us mm -hmm. or take the time to listen they mm -hmm. might still disagree i mean i don't expect everybody to agree with me but why can't like we be friends you know what i mean like why can't we all sit around like this yeah. and have conversations we don't have to touch you know on like transgenderism or things that we know we will disagree on but why can't we talk about other things we have in common why can't we find that common ground and like yeah. have lunch yeah. <laughs> so like and it's hard because they feel scared yeah. But how about me? Yeah. I'm a conservative on campus. I was scared to go on campus when I came back from spring break because all of the very threatening things that they told me. I'm five foot three, <laughs> barely five foot three. And like, I'm a girl. I'm, I'm scared. I'm scared to be walking alone. I'm scared that somebody's going to do something to me like they say they will on Instagram. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, it's like, and then we feel like on top of that, like the university or I guess the chancellors who have been like the spokesperson, I guess. Um, when they say that, you know, we're harmful or we're toxic or things mm -hmm. like that, I don't think that we have like a, uh, like an equally like, like, I don't know how to explain it, like that we're equally represented mm -hmm. on well, campus. Well, I think you know, like, like the like, university's goal of diversity and inclusion, I don't think that has to, like, I think our campus is very diverse. Yes. I think that, I mean, obviously, it's what are we? Forty thousand students. Yeah. Something like I, I, I think they come from everywhere. Um, I think it is very diverse, but I, I, it just doesn't seem to be like very inclusive or accepting to conservative viewpoints, which I don't think. It's like a demographic of differing ideas or ideologies is accepting you know what mm -hmm. i mean are you no. following what i'm saying no, no, I, I, I totally do and yeah. I, again I, i'll be perfectly honest I, I totally understand why folks who might identify as conservative feel like the odd person out mm -hmm. uh, on these campuses right. um part of what i would want you to think about is relative to not you but relative to the broader conservative ideology that people are exposed to right. you know whether it's coming from the past administration or folks like uh, Knowles. Like, do you see why folks might feel some kind of way? Yes and no. Okay. Yes. Um, okay, let me start with the no. If they would have gotten exactly what he said and, like, watched the whole speech, I don't think that radicate transgenders, which is what's going around, would be going around. Okay. If those people didn't just pick out that segment the and, three words and the three words and say yeah. oh my gosh like he wants to like terminate us all because that's what's happening and it's like when people have asked me well like why are you bringing the speaker on campus i'm like first of all it's not me second of all why is he so bad and then they'll say because they said you know to eradicate transgenders and then the third point is okay have you watched the full speech and half their i mean always i think 99.9 .9 percent of the time it's no and I said, go ahead and watch it. He's saying that the ideology of transgenderism is actually also harming transgenders. So I think to that point, right? Like what does that mean? Okay, so the way I, I mean, I do actually want to ask Michael Knowles when he comes. Like yeah. if, if it's, uh, if I can do a Q&A, like, sure, yeah. or I guess if I'm able to participate in the Q&A, I want to actually ask him like what he meant. But what I think it meant is this ideology that's being promoted that everybody and anyone who doesn't feel like, you know, a girl and a, or a girl that feels like a guy or vice versa just needs to change. And I think it's this ideology that's being pushed so hard in the media mm. that it's actually affecting people that are scared to come out as that. There is this like minority of like mm. people who don't just, I feel like what he meant is like, it's just more like of a trend. 
Like it's being pushed as like a trend. Yeah. But so so one question I have because yeah. I asked if y'all had connections with people identify trans. Right. And so have you spoken to folks? And Social media. I mean, whenever I post, they'll be like, yeah. um, I forget exactly what the comment was, but like. Um, why would you bring the speaker on campus? Because we did post that the three conservative speakers were coming. They're yeah. all in like a post where it's yeah. their three faces. And they were like um, something about like shame on you for bringing someone that's saying to eradicate transgenders on yeah. campus. And I said, wait, please, have you watched a full interview? No. Okay, here's a link. Yeah. Things well, like that. Know, so I was meaning like, because he, he's saying something. Right. But, I mean, unless he's showing you statistical data, you know, sort of medical reports, like you mentioned, it's probably just an opinion. Of course. And so, relative to those folks who actually have that identity, right, have you had a chance to kind of converse with them to say, were you pushed into this, you know, or right. is this, because I think that's part the part where I'm like, well, we, we've known for the longest time that, you know, people have always experienced, you know, people right. who have a certain gender may not feel very comfortable. Uh, and so it's not that this is something that's new, mm -hmm. There's just more awareness with things like social media. Right. You right. know, and so to the extent where it's like someone hears, oh, we want to eradicate transgender, well, this has existed long before right. any of us. Right. Right. And so when they hear the idea, like, well, we want this to go away, now you're asking people to say, well, eradicate your identity. Right. Which, again, I think maybe if you engage with someone who has that identity, you might yeah. be able to sort of explain, like, why that feels so threatening. Yeah, no, and I'm, like I said, I'm more than, like, happy to. Like, yeah, if that yeah. opportunity comes, I'm not going to turn it down. I'll mm -hmm. absolutely, let's go get coffee or lunch. Mm -hmm. I want to sure. hear what you have to say. Sure. But, like, I mean, this is, of course, my opinion. Mm -hmm. But I, I will always think, and I mean, I stand by this. Like, gender and sex, to me, aren't two different things. They're the same. Even though the folks will tell you. Well, no, if, if they they want to be different, like yeah. have like different, I guess. Yeah, I guess that's the best way to explain it. If they have like different, you know, sex and gender, that's yeah. fine. Yeah. But like for me, like, I, I don't know. I just, I don't see like how they're different. Well, well so just, just on the technical level, right? Mm -hmm. Sex is biological, right. right? So that speaks to the parts that you have. Right. Gender is just a construct. That speaks to the way you identify, right? And so, kind of like race is a social construct. It was all made up, right? That gender, in a sense, is also kind of made up. The idea of what it means to be a man versus a woman, they're all things that people just decided, right? And so, to the extent that that operates on the spectrum, right, that you've probably seen young women or, or girls who dress like boys and what we call the tomboys, right? Right. That's an aspect of what we call gender identity. So, in that sense, it's very fluid. Right. Right. Whereas sex in itself, again, you have these parts, or you have these parts, or in some cases, some folks come out with both parts. Right, but, okay, yes, I understand that, but, like, what I have a hard time understanding is, so, like, I'm a woman, right? That's my sex, mm -hmm. right? No, uh, well, well, female, female, there you go. Yeah. female, okay, that's my sex. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, There's times where I'll do, I guess, what society has labeled as a boy Thing, you know, like I'll play with trucks, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. I'll play with trucks, whatever, and then I'll want to go get my nails done. That's mm -hmm. a girl thing to do, I guess, right? And, and, and again, because society defines it that way, right? But, but again, if it's the case that we're realizing perhaps we don't have to be so rigid, right? Right then, so then boys can get their nails painted, of girls course. can play with trucks, and again, of you're allowed to sort of identify whichever way makes you feel most comfortable. Of course, but like, how am I supposed to identify now if I like both? My sex is a female sex, uh -huh. but now my gender, how do I identify if I like both things? I know I'm a, I'm a female, like mm. for my sex, so I think I am a woman because of my sex. Mm -hmm. I feel like a woman because of my sex, mm -hmm. but now how do I, I guess, when it comes to gender, mm -hmm. identify. Well, see, that's the idea, right? If it operates on the spectrum, that means you get to choose, in a sense. Well, so think about it this way. Think about your ethnic identity, mm -hmm. right? You can choose to say, I'm Mexican-American. You can just choose to say, I'm American, right? You can choose to say whatever you feel is most meaningful for you. Right, but what if I say I'm Chinese, but I'm not? Can I still choose to be Chinese? What's the correlation? Yeah, like, so you said you can choose, like, to say whatever you want for your ethnicity, right? Uh -huh. Right, so I am Mexican. Uh -huh. Like, that is my truth. But now if I'm saying I'm something else, since it's on a spectrum, can I still say that? 
Well, ethnicity is not all. See, that's what I think. That's where again, I think there's a being mindful of distinction, right? So race in of itself can be a spectrum. Okay. Right, because again, race in of itself is very arbitrary, socially constructed, right? Whereas you know your background, the ethnicity part, is probably a bit more concrete, like given to your mind. Right. But if it's the idea that gender in of itself, right, is arbitrary, because again, you, you've heard young girls be referred to as tomboys. Right. Of course. That, that's a gender. I was a tomboy. Well, see, that's what I'm saying. So right. if you say I'm a tomboy, right, that's just a gender classification. Right. 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 I'm just I'm trying to understand. Mm -hmm. So like, um, I guess race then. You know, um, if I said I'm Mexican. Right, mm -hmm. but like, what if I'm like saying something that's not true to who I am? Like, if I were to say like I'm Chinese, but like I mean, that's not see, my truth. I, see, but I think I think you, you've made the point for yourself. If it's not true for you, then obviously it's not going to be meaningful. But if someone says, you know, I, I have, I do things that I like that are often associated with boys, and so I'm a tomboy, or I think of myself as a boy. It's true for them. Isn't that? Isn't that their truth? Yes, yes, yes. No, I, I get what you're saying, and I think, I think that... What, I think what you're trying to express is how... If I tell you that I'm a girl, I'm, mm. I'm clearly not a girl. Mm. But if I tell you that, how can I expect you to, to believe that I'm a girl? Well, see, that's the thing. If, yeah, if I, that's not, a good way to... If, if it's not your truth, though, right? That is, if you don't do anything relative to that idea, right, right then clearly it's not true for you. But I think but that if that you decided to say, you know what, I want to do things that make me feel more effeminate, you know, and so whether you choose to wear dresses, you know, grow out your hair, you know, uh, perform, you know, in, in, in shows, right? And you say, because I, I like the idea of being a woman, again, because it's socially constructed, then that would be true for you. But then that, I think that that, then what makes that difficult is that would change truth from an objective thing to be a subjective thing. Yeah, but we just uh, we just talking about gender in itself. It's, in some cases, right? Depending on how folks might identify, it mm -hmm. could be a little subjective. Like you said, you, at one point you were a tomboy. I mean, and if that was true for you, right? I mean, because you did certain things, you dressed certain ways, right? Who might say, well, no, you're not. Oh, what kind of food? I apologize. Y'all have not even started. No, no, we're good. We're, no, I, I, I'm enjoying the conversation. <laughs> yeah. I haven't even thought about it seriously. This, this, this is uh, the director of our master's program. Nice yeah. to meet you. Yeah. Uh, but I will come take some of your pizza later. Okay. Um, yeah. I'm going to bring the sign-in sheet. I need some names. So <laughs> I will need four of you. Brian, can you give me the sign -in? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, that's what I just have a hard time. Not yeah. accepting, but understanding. Well, um, and that's perfectly okay. Remember I said in our society, we're, we're often raised in ways where we don't understand differences. Right. So part of our work is perfecting the connection so we can understand our differences. Well, right. Uh, also, I think, not, aside from not understanding, expected to, like, partake in. Yeah. Mm. Which I know is hard. That it's, I feel like that's the major dilemma around gender ideology. Mm -hmm. We'll grab like whole boxes of pizza that way now. Okay. <laughs> and you can actually eat pizza if you want to. That too. <laughs> you can Thank have you. it all. <laughs> Sign-in sheet is just for... Just uh, to say we're just fine with pizza. So for oh, business. Okay. Uh, if y'all don't mind a little bit of <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. This is the conference room? Mm -hmm. Has it always been the conference room? Okay. Oh, here's your phone. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Oh, oh I love this, you all. I love all the weddings that we get to see. I know, me neither. I'm probably just going to eat it when I get... There's some right there. I'll Thank probably you. just eat when I get back. Yeah. But. <laughs> this nice, uh, since moving here, I've been searching for other Mexican or Mexican-American. Really? I'm Mexican. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, and um, there's a Latin American graduate organization. Oh. Uh, 
called Lagos. Um, and then, is there an undergraduate one for like Latinx or anything? Maybe, I don't know. Okay. I've never, uh, yeah, I've never really heard of it. Do you use the term Latinx? No. Okay. Uh, what does it mean? So, from what I know, I use it. It's just, well, I'm pretty sure it, it calls into thinking gender as well. Okay. Because like, if I say Latino, I, if I call you Latino, you might say I'm Latina. Right. Or La Latinx or Latina. Do you speak Spanish? Yes. Okay, cool. So w the things that I follow on social media have really tried to, to remove the O and the A because Spanish is rooted in what I perceive to be gender. Right. Um, it's just kind of a mind game when I'm like, okay, what am I reading? Who, wh what is the message here? And I think it's, it's meant for inclusivity. Right. But I think it it disorients people, especially like my parents who didn't grow up with and did, like with our right. you know conversations and and whatnot. So. My nephew, he's up like 23. He doesn't use Latinx either. I, I, I'm going to say I'm American, Mexican, Mexican American. Some people out, sometimes I'll just say Mexican. Right. That's what I feel. Yeah. Yeah. No, so. I'll always say, yeah, I think. I hope y'all don't want to snack on this pizza. No, 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 no you're no. good. Okay. I think, I mean, in regards to that, I think I've never been called like nothing. Like, I've always been called Latina. Okay. Yeah, I don't think I've ever, like, had to, like, deal with that, I mm -hmm. guess. Or, like, Latino, and I'm not Latino, I'm not. Like, yeah. I don't think I've ever had to experience that. We were just talking about Latinx. And oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. What was it about? And again, I was back to gender. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's such a... Because I'll, I'll say this. I mean, I grew up in a... Um, the dominant Christian household, you know, to the point at one point we were going to church. Two, three times a week, which mm -hmm. I'm like, you know, and so there were definitely very sort of hard set things that were pushed, you know, definitely anti LGBT at the time, and, you know, to the extent to where, because my parents were African immigrants, okay. in some ways they adopted this sort of false ideology that black Americans in some cases were lesser than, and so mm -hmm. they'd always say, oh, you're not like them, you know, don't hang out with them, don't right. die kind of thing, you know, and so. Obviously, as I grew, grew over time and really began to sort of explore and understand difference, mm -hmm. right? And really, when I started making friends that were LGBT, I started realizing like a lot of the stuff that I was socializing to, not only was it accurate, it positioned me to have biases that I didn't even realize, mm -hmm. right? It positioned me to have thoughts and opinions on people that I just didn't know anything about. And mm -hmm. so I would utilize stereotypes to talk about people that I just didn't know, yeah. right? And so to me, that's where I became more mindful, you know, that before I can make judgment on people who have particular identities, one of the things I need to do is actually create relationships and understand them, right? Because too often we're socialized around negative messaging around people and their identities, particularly identities that are often marginalized, you know? And so that's, that's why I love the work that I do because it puts me in the position to learn about Again, a lot of what I find is that most people are good people. We just don't really understand each other very yeah. well. You know, so what does it mean to create a society where we can actually work to understand each other in meaningful ways? And also be mindful of the harmful ways in which we've been socialized and almost unknowingly perpetuate harm that right. impacts other people. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I just had one quick uh, another question. So, yeah. um, meeting you for the first time today, and we're talking about the spectrum of gender or the concreteness of it. You know, I, I kind of contemplated should I tone down my self I got my nails painted, I got this on. Right, you know. Right, but, right, right. And it doesn't really phase me as much as it used to, but in certain spaces, like when I go, so I grew up in rural Texas, and rural Texas is very conservative, very red, and no stranger uh, to that color of um, politics. And I also really like politics as well. Yeah. So, but when I went back for Christmas break, um, and I had my nose pierced, I just, there was an, in, whether it's perceived, whether it's an internalized thing, I just felt like I was, I was just uneasy. But does, does, do I make you uneasy as someone who's a queer person or anything like that? Or, okay. I yeah, just, no, 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 no. And 
No, I mean, why, why, why should you, you know, not be able to express yourself? Like, I, you know what I mean? Like, I will never like. That's what Khalil and I. It's like hard to put it into words. Like, and I'm not saying you personally, but like when people shove that down like your throat or expect you to take part in it, mm-hmm. that's when it's like, okay, whoa. But okay. if you're like, if that's who you are, like, it's kind of like you know people that are like more. Like, quiet, there's people that are loud. Like, that's kind of, like, if that's who you are, then, like, be who you are. (laughs) You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But, like, there's just some things that I will never, like, agree with or partake in. Right. But, like, you shouldn't stop being who you are for anybody. And I think Mm -hmm. whether that's, like, your gender or the way you identify or, like, the things that you support, like, Mm -hmm. I'm never going to stop being myself for anybody. Mm -hmm. And I don't think anybody else should either. I think that everybody... I mean, we have one life, like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you should be able to do things that make you feel happy. And mm. So to that point, like, yeah, I think, do you see how someone can feel very sort of iffy when someone says eradicate the idea that doing what you makes you feel happy should be eradicated? Right. That was very bright. Right. Yeah. No, no, I, th- I think that, to articulate on that a little bit, I think, I think what he was getting at was um and i'm not very like well polished on this so we want to ask like we want to ask him this no like we seriously want to ask him this because on the topic as a whole i'm not very well polished so i'm not going to pretend that like i am yeah Yeah. um i think that from what i've seen um like the whole idea being pushed to younger children through books or through taking them to drag shows or you know that whole thing um i think at that point it's like a little far because in my opinion i think that kindergartners that kids should should grow up in an apolitical setting and like uh you know allowed to be kids if you feel that way explore that but like i don't think that it's I don't think that it's right to, mm-hmm. you know, take five-year-olds to drag shows. I, I think that's inappropriate. Yeah. I think... See, that's the thing, though. <clears throat> that's, that's been happening literally for centuries, right? Right. And so I think that's that's where I'm, I'm, I think the rub comes from, is that these people have existed just of because course. other folks that, didn't yeah. know. And, and so, for example, like with the idea of drag shows... Young kids have been going to drag shows for centuries. Right. It doesn't make them any more likely, right, to want to right. shift their identity. I think where the fear comes in from is now, all of a sudden, that the idea right. that parents who probably know their kids best, right, are somehow wrong for doing things that have been done for centuries. Right. Right. And 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 I think it's the, again where it's the idea now that all of a sudden people want to take away their agency to do things that they've been doing for so long. Mm. So yeah, I. It's not that. It's so like. It's like being pushed by the media a lot. And, well, so and that's, that's the other thing too is that what does that mean though? If it's the idea that we're just literally highlighting an identity that's always existed. Right, but like the little kid, I forget what school he was in that picked up a book from. I'm not his picked school. it up. The librarian. The librarian. He was gave looking it for a comic book, and the the comic. There's been a couple of scenarios like this where mm-hmm. the school do, do not does not inform like the parents of like or the parents don't know what their children are learning about and mm-hmm. they're you know the librarians the kid asks for a comic book in the lo- in the library like the book was like a very graphic comic book that two guys were doing something together mm-hmm. and it's like this kid is 9 years old yeah, at, that's like mm-hmm. pornography in a book whether right. it's like What's the name of the book? I don't, know. I don't know. I could find it. Yeah, we could find But there's, like, and it's, like, if you're, if, you know, if a teacher were to hand, let's say, my kid that. I mean, I don't have kids, but mm-hmm. let's say I did. I mean, I probably wouldn't take them back to that school. First of all, inappropriate, whether it's gay or straight. <laughs> I mean, and, like, I just feel like a lot of ideologies like this or, like, you know, kids, uh or libraries pushing that there's drag show time, like a reading book time with drag queens, like things like that, and but like that's been common. Like that's the thing is that those have been around for so long. I think I right. think that's the part where I'm just like, I remember those things right. back in the day. But now, like, there's so many kids, or like the media's like pushing it so much 
but now there's kids that are growing up thinking like I mean I I don't I will never support that that that's just my opinion and of course yeah. um that's my belief but I will never I mean I went to a drag show once and I was very very uncomfortable mm -hmm. and I went when I was pretty young um so that I guess the question would be what made you uncomfortable they were like shoving <laughs> their things like like on my body I was sitting at a table and they were dancing around us and it's like did you get very close yeah yeah and it's like if a kid like I just like that makes me so sad like like I almost felt like violated I, and I can't even imagine how like a little kid like you know what I mean like am I like I don't know if I'm getting around like what I'm trying to say I think the, maybe one distinction and correct me if I'm wrong is you were at a bar no, no, no. It was in a bar. I I was under 18. Oh, okay. Yeah, and it was, it was like a dinner setting. Okay. And then there was like a stage. But mm. like whenever like they started, I guess, their performance, mm. they would walk around. And right. I mean, mm. one literally, like my friend started crying. We had to leave. Um, literally, my friend was sitting next to me and I think the drag queen came and like shoved like the, their like chest into their face. Mm. And she was like, what in the world? He came very close to me and like was like, dancing and like shoving things that I did not want to be shoved or like, on really just things like that and I was little and the only reason we wanted was one of my friend's birthday and this is what they wanted to do and like she was my best friend so I was like okay I need to go but like I mean we ended up leaving after 30 minutes because once it was so it was like this is very inappropriate regardless if these were people you know that they're men and now they're dancing as like women you know like regardless of that like <clears throat> I just think that's inappropriate. Even if like straight women or men were doing that, like I just think that's like inappropriate. And this being shoved down on little like in little kids' faces and like kind of the media making it okay. Like, I think that we focused on like the on like just the specific I like yeah. thing of drag too much because there there are also and of course this is like what you see in the news, mm -hmm. like what you read about, mm -hmm. and. Um, just, there have been, like, instances of, um, like, <clears throat> children going to counseling at school, the parents are unaware, under 18, and it's being pushed on them to, um, like, almost suggested mm -hmm. to go with a different pronoun or mm -hmm. something else. Or to get surgery. Um, and, like, like, through, like, pediatric care, too, like, the, seems like it's kind of been um pushed. pushed for hormone block or puber puberty blockers or a uh, sex change surgery you know what i mean and like those are unhealthy like it, it's not have y'all connected with anyone that's gone through a transition to get their feedback no so we we have a friend and their cousin is considering it mm -hmm. um and i mean even though doctors are pushing it there's a lot of doctors pushing it to be, you know, safe and stuff. Like, at the end of the day, when you come back with it, there's not enough, like, data on this yet. Like, it's relatively new. Um, and so, right now, he's not doing it. I mean, will he in the future? Who knows? But right now, it's, like, unsafe. Not because, like, it's unsafe to change your gender. Because, like, the actual, like... It comes with a lot of, like, health yeah. problems. It's, like... like as a result down the road is i mean for right now there's not enough data i mean this is completely different but like the covid vaccine like that was relatively new and pushed on very very early now we're seeing side same effects thing. of myocarditis right the so same thing for this i think that i mean this is now getting into medical thing but like i oh, think that and that, that's what i was going to say like we're at a very good medical and so have you connected right. with folks in the public health department to further verify some of what you're sharing? Or? No, no, I mean, we rarely ever talk about this with anybody. Mm -hmm. It's just us two. No, no, like... see, I, and see, and, and this is, because I appreciate this part, right? Right. Where, again, I think a lot of the learning that I had to do over time was realize that some of the things that I heard that I thought were factual or things that, again, I thought I believed in, right, weren't always things rooted in truth, right? right? And that often, as I dug deeper, found data or other perspectives, I started realizing, like, oh, well, I see why that is. Maybe. Right, and so, I mean, there's very clear data with regards to folks who transition that usually it's like a last resort, right? Those folks are usually going through very severe depression, right? To the mm -hmm. point where, for many of them, if they don't make that move, 
chances are they probably won't be positioned to live very long, or at least not live a very meaningful life, right? And then the data also shows for a lot of folks who do go through transitions, like a significant improvement in their way of life, right? right? So if it's the case that ultimately we want people to thrive, right? Like, should they not be positioned to do the things that are going to help them thrive? And that's what I'm saying, like, that right. public health data seems very clear. Right. So, like, where, where, where would you say, okay, I have, like, a basis for the yeah. data that I believe in terms of data? I know, if I and saw, I'll, if I I'll saw, gather it for you. If, if I I'll saw, gather the, where I've seen, like, studies of, like, people that go through transitions actually being in more, like, having more depression <clears throat> or suicide. I'll gather all those, because I, I can't name them off the top of well, my head. Yeah, so, so but the other thing, too, is I think that's, that's what I'm like, maybe if you, even before they talk to someone who, who right. identifies you, that'll tell you, right? Right. You know, and, and that way it doesn't even have to be speculation. Right. You know, and, and I think, like you mentioned, you want to have those conversations. Of course, Because, yeah. again, they tend to ground our understanding better of differences that we might not be familiar with. Right. You know, and, and I think, again, that's probably some of why we see some of this frustration, right? Because, you know, there are people here who have those identities. Right. Whereas, you know, perhaps a conversation with them, you know, to better understand, you know, why they made those choices can get to a lot of the, the sort of understanding that you all are looking for. Yeah. No, I mean, I'm open to it. If the yeah. opportunity ever came or if I found someone to reach out to, I definitely would. I'm not opposed to it. Um, yeah, I mean, I just... Because that was kind of the... In, um, approaching a conversation like this it was like who who would like to see at this table and i didn't want it was not meant to be a spectacle it was right. not meant to be a, also not a secret right right um a very open door literally to policy <laughs> and just yeah. like every, i hope people feel safe and not yeah. and come and go as they please um but as as so i know that the the thing on the 18th is the event is still happening and whatnot but as we move forward and like uh, and you're here for at least both for another semester. Are you going to be serving uh, in your position in the fall? Yes. Um, can you envision or do you think um, we can have another conversation where we have some folks who have Absolutely. who identify? Absolutely. Like, Absolutely, yeah. But yeah. it's not, again, for the, yeah. for a showcase. Right, right, right. Like right. Yeah. Engaging yeah, in yeah, the yeah. things that you like and yeah. want to yeah. do. Yeah, like nothing big, something small, more yeah. in intimate, I guess. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. And I, I would even say... No one wants to have to try and justify why they exist yeah. the way they do. But a conversation. Conversa yeah. No, yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, I think I think we can even get, I mean, I don't know how big or small you want this. Or oh, okay, maybe table, still and that would but be I think useful. we can get one or two other people <clears throat> that would definitely, you know, want to join in on the conversation. And the, and the reason I bring that up is because of the election year coming up and you're passionate about politics you'll pay attention if you have not already been and i think i'm i'm looking for other opportunities other than looking at my politics podcast my you know my bubble and my circle of friends who yeah we support one another in our beliefs but that's i don't really get much i don't get far when we're just all circulating the same ideas mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have different ideas, I imagine. You haven't shared too many with me, but right. um, that's what that's what I'm hopeful for. Yeah. And so um, yeah, I don't know how that's going to look, or you know, the timeline of that. And but at least your willingness is is, is gives me hope. Yeah. No. Of course. And like I think I can only speak for myself, maybe but like I feel like. Politics shouldn't be as divided as it no, is. No, right not now. at all. Yeah. It, it should not. And um, do, I do think. Do you think there's a reason behind that? Though? Yes. Okay. Not enough conversation. Yeah. Well, I mean, again, if you look at the federal landscape, because again, that's where most people particularly pay attention. Right. Like, would you say there are things that have happened in the past few years right, that give people sort of cause for concern? Absolutely. Yes. Um, yeah, I, like the point I was going to just make is I, I think that, you know, we, we literally said this whenever people were starting to make the petition to cancel our events, we literally said, this should be the perfect place, a college campus, university, it should be the perfect place to be able to have discussion, and not debate, discussion. Mm -hmm. Hey, this is what I think, this yeah. is what I think, this is what I think, okay, great, like, let's talk about it. Maybe there is... In all the disagreements, maybe yeah. there's one thing that we can just like, you know, like be at a common ground with. 
And like, I think that, I mean, this is the perfect place to do so. And that's what we always say in our meetings. We're like, we welcome everybody. Like our meetings aren't like, these like harmful or toxic things as yeah. the vice yeah, chancellor it's not, said. We don't, this yeah, is I literally mean, fun. Like we talk about like, did you see like something on the news? You did? Great. What do you think? Yeah. Some people will be like, well, I think this. And they'll be like, no, I disagree. And they'll say their point. And yeah. it's like, okay, great. Like we're not here to disagree, agree. Like we're here to talk. Mm-hmm. And, and I, I, like, I, I think that like one of the things that like, and I do think this is how people like feel about us and like kind of view us. It's like, I've read this comment. Somebody said, like... People are so mean. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry for that. You know, because... I remember I said to Gary, these are kids, I'm pretty sure they don't want to be pariahs. No one wants to experience the stuff that they're probably experiencing. They're like, eradicate Christians. I'm like, the, oh my God. They, they, were, they said something along, and I was like, this is, like, so far off, like... Off the off base, like mm-hmm. they meet under white hoods at night, and like, are you yeah. seriously? We like, need magical no, we do spells not. too. Like, no. it's like, are you serious? Like, if you like, I I invite you to come to our next yeah. meeting too. Like, you, there you are a lot of fun. To, listen, you know what? <laughs> I mean, I, I, I'll say this: I'd love to engage with you all in, that, in the conversation. Like I mentioned, we we do work around racial equity consciousness, and right. I'd love to just present a few things, get your thoughts. Yeah. You know, and and again. Because a lot of what you share is exactly what I believe. I believe this should be the place to exchange ideas, yeah. to exchange perspectives, and to do so in a way where it's like, no, you don't have to be able to it's Like, no, let's share an idea and let's see what we think. Right. And and even, you just reminded me, the, the debate coming up. Mm-hmm. It's not ours, but I mean, we're going to go um, before, you know. And I mean, I, I've always followed Michael Knowles. Mm-hmm. And I think he does have a lot of good things to say, you know. Mm-hmm. Aside from what he said now, mm-hmm. I, I want to ask him, like, hey, what was, like, the, the intent mm-hmm. behind what you said? Like, because I really want to know. Mm-hmm. Um, but, like, besides that, I've always followed him. Mm-hmm. And um, I always follow the Daily Wire. I really, really like the organization. And, I mean, I just think it's a perfect opportunity mm-hmm. for both sides. It's not just a Michael Knowles speech. Mm-hmm. It's a debate. I think that's a great, great way for both ideas to be heard. And and, and I don't think that it's a debate on um, the existence of no. transgender people. Because the, the professor, I, I forget their name, and I, to be honest, I don't know what they identify as. Either, so, um, <clears throat> but, but they're transgender, they, I thought. No, no, yeah, they are. Right. The, um, professor out of U Chicago didn't, she came out... Of, she came out and said that um, she doesn't want the debate to be because I don't, like, I don't think that that's what it was. And also, like, it's a good opportunity to hear, to hear both side. viewpoints. And I, and, I, and I think that another thing is that, like, I think there's a constant need today for, uh, like, a shock value of everything, a shock value of everything yeah. from... Republican side from the Democrat side and I think that they have done especially like the media all yeah. media mm-hmm. I think that it's intentional because the more shock there is and the more pinned each other yeah. like ha- the more they're able to pin each other like people yeah. against each other yeah. the more money they make and mm-hmm. you know everything else and people are more engaged and that's all that they care about yeah. mm-hmm. and then there's just more shocking news you know what I mean it, it, it. <clears throat> I totally agree. Yeah. You know, and, and I, I think that's part of the reason why folks sometimes look at someone like Michael Knowles and like, well, he makes money by saying jolting things. Right. 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 You know, I mean, yeah. he, he makes money by making people feel some kind of way. Right. You know, and, you know, yeah. I, I think that's one of the things yeah. to sort of consider is that he kind of relies on right. people feeling aggravated. Right. And so, of like, course. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I, I, I totally agree. I think that um, the media divides us more than, than anything. That's, I mean, that's the thing, yeah. the media. Yeah. I, think if, yeah. I think if, every, if the media ceased to exist, mm-hmm. I think that the issues we're having today would not exist and would have been solved a long time ago. I, I'd love it to, to come to one of your meetings. I, yeah. I mean, I don't know if y'all have like three hours you can dedicate work, because I'd love to just have like an extensive conversation. Yeah, what we y'all. could do is, I mean, our meetings are only an hour. Yeah. But um, what we could do, so next Thursday, we meet every other Thursday. Yeah, what time? Um, 8 p.m. Like, I mean, would you all be willing if we had something extended? I'll buy your pizza. Yeah, no, so what we can do, so the next Thursday we're having, like, a game night. Okay. It'll literally, we play, like, 
uh, like Republican trivia, name the president, things like that. It's a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Um, but what we could do is, um, I mean, if you would be willing to, and if we can reserve the the space a little bit longer, yeah. we can even do it for two hours. We can play for like 30, yeah. 40 minutes. Once that's done, just have a conversation. For those who want to stick around, there's some people that aren't as comfortable they can they can go ahead and head out but the people mm-hmm. that want to stay for a conversation we can let them know and yep. we can just have like a conversation because i mean it's it's good to talk about there's it is. we're very headstrong on some things like i'm sure you know that you guys are too but mm-hmm. like i think that it's mm-hmm. like a like a good first step to like understand each other right and i and i, I think also like it is worth um like recognizing too that people are different and you're not yeah. always going to agree and or see eye to eye on everything totally but that doesn't agree. mean that you have to you know hate mm-hmm. the other people who like mm-hmm. don't think the same yeah. I, I actually think the idea of hating someone you know over differences is not only not helpful it runs counter to the idea of being able to foster one which everybody can thrive right yeah, right? You yeah. Know, I, I often lean off of this saying from Audrey Lord the master's tools can't dismantle the master's house. You can't use hate to overcome hate, you know? Yeah. And, and I think part of the challenge for us, you know, again, as human beings, is to be able to see human beings for who they are and embrace mm-hmm. that, all right? Yeah. And not be in a position to judge anybody mm-hmm. based on identities that are meaningful for them, right. right? And so that's going back to the idea, right? But, you know, if you say you're a woman but doesn't really mean anything to you, right? Well, obviously that's completely different to someone else who says it and it means something to them, right? Of right? And so I think for us, we want to be positioned to embrace people to say, hey, the things that are meaningful for you, right? And that again, exist and sometimes in the spectrum, right? That we should be able to embrace that and not cast judgment because right. ultimately, you know, one of the things I often ask people, who likes to be judged? Right. You yeah. can rarely find anybody that yeah. wants to, you know, be yeah. under the gun of society's judgment, right? And so right. we need to be mindful that we're not putting others to be, be judged, mm-hmm. you know? I really appreciate y'all coming. Yeah, I'm very no, thank grateful you for, for having us. Yeah, please keep coming. I got. I'm always in meetings, so I got another one <laughs> yeah. to jump into. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Right, you know, and, and I think the more we can help people better sort of break those things down so we can foster those connections, the more we can sort of get on the same page. better for everybody. Yeah, I agree. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you. Nice meeting you. Thank you all. Thank you. Glad you yeah. could come by. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that was great. And yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, like I said, like, I grew up dancing. I have a lot of yeah. friends that, you know, identify as different things, and, like, yeah. I don't hate them at all right. I, I still yeah. love them you know it doesn't change who you are as a person what you've done for my life yeah um so yeah i don't ever want you to feel like you have to hide who you are and that's i mean that, at the end of the day that's my thing of like, course right and i appreciate that um i've done a lot of work on it and i'm just glad that i'm at the point in my life where i mean i do care i don't want to cause harm right but most definitely, I don't want to cause harm in myself. Of course. So that's yeah. the that's balance that I'm yeah. trying to strike these days. Of course. Put yourself um, first. Yeah. Always. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, um, I don't. The, the tour would be just really three floors. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty boring. Um, do you come to the cathedral often? We have one. Yeah. I have one class. Yeah, okay. you have one class too. Mm-hmm. Right yeah. On. So we're not yeah. here too often but i mean whenever like i came to look at pit my mom and i did like yeah, the 40th floor how high we could get in the cathedral yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a beautiful yeah. building mm-hmm. but, are you in the pause bar a lot or where are you yeah so most of our classes are pause bar um but they bounce I, all over last semester i had some in pause bar i don't have any in pause bar this year most of my classes are like yeah. online too Oh, okay. Like, like web that? ones. I love it. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I it, work full time. It, it's weird because... So it, I love it, yeah. It seems like it, like, almost works out, like, the, all the classes that, like, we need, a lot of them are web-based. Mm-hmm. So it's, like, kind of like, yeah. well, I guess we have to take these ones. Yeah. So, I, I like it. I really only have two classes in person. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, I haven't loved my experience at Pitt. Yeah. So, like, the, like... If I if I don't have to come to cap, to campus, I won't. Like mm. I really won't. Like I I've never really liked my teachers. Mm. It's always been like I said. There's downsides to being conservative on campus. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of them, and like obviously, if you say something, oh, well, I mean, it might affect 
your grade in the class. And, oh, that's not good. Yeah, and then we've seen it a lot. So like before, we used to just like feed our professors like lies, but that they wanted to hear. Okay. And like our papers, <laughs> and like when we stopped doing that and actually spoke what we felt mm -hmm. because we wanted to learn. If you're mm -hmm. not saying what you feel, you're never gonna learn. And so now, I mean, our grades dropped tremendously after we started voicing how we felt about some things, but I think it's made me grow as a person and learn. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you have to give and take. And, yeah. But, I mean, I, I, I didn't love my experience at Pitt, so I'm happy to be graduating in a semester. Yeah. Then I'll go back to Florida. For law school or is law school in the For future? law school, okay. yeah. I would, yeah. If I can get into a Florida school, then I'll definitely be in Florida. Okay. Yeah, it's a lot like Texas. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> but my my uh, family, I have family in Texas. Okay, cool. Yeah. Right on. Well, feel free to you know make your way wherever awesome. you need to go. But I'll thank you. Yeah, thank thank you. you. Yeah. Lovely to meet you. Nice meeting you. And do you go by Lily or Liliana? Well, Liliana is my full name, but it's shorter Lily. Yeah. Everybody calls me Lily, so feel free to call me Lily. I say Gabriel, and then they are, they call me Gabrielle. They call me Bob. I'm Gabe? just like my brother's Gabe. name is Gabriel, actually. I that's the one thing I prefer, Gabriel. Gabriel. So, yeah. So Gabriel, it is. Right. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank seriously. You. Oh, you bet. You're very welcome. Hopefully, and I'll be in touch. Um, yeah. Is your meeting next week? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well. Wait. Well, not this Thursday. This are you sure? Yeah, because we had one last week. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Yeah, and if I mean, if I can't return to for like 10, since it's at 8, then we can do a follow-up with the following. That'll be like the last. Yeah. The last. And we're flexible. Like again. Yeah. There's really no urgency. It's just I would like more. No, I would love to. Yeah. Absolutely. No. Yeah, that would be great. I think that would be good. Cool. Yeah, and we can yeah. let everybody know those who want to stay can if All they right. don't. And if you guys want to bring like other people too. Yeah, that'd yeah. be great. I mean, I'll tell you how much yeah. capacity we could there get is a bigger, room, like a bigger, get room, a bigger room, room. Okay. If you want yeah. to bring like two other people, that would be Okay, cool. I'll yeah. start with really small, like two or three people, and then yeah, yeah. Okay. We can go. And I'll just do an email. Yeah, yeah. Shoot me an email. Okay. I I answer pretty fast. All right. <laughs> All right. Thank, Thank you so much. Have a good one.